The Quran claims all life was made from water. But is that true? And if so, is it evidence that the book comes from God? Stay tuned to find out. In my last video, I demonstrated that it's very easy to imagine scientific foreknowledge, or what Muslims call scientific miracles, in any text at all. As such, I suggested five criteria to help tell the difference between legitimate evidence of divine authorship and a trick of the mind. To recap, they are number one, the claimed insight must be true, that is, match current scientific consensus. Number two, it must go beyond what could be obtained from careful observation using 7th century technology. Number three, it must be original to the Quran, that is, not found in previous texts. Number four, the text must actually say what is claimed as evidenced by the classical tafsir. And number five, the insight must go beyond a lucky guess. For further explanation on any of those, see my previous video introducing the subject by clicking the icon above. With the criteria set, let's start our investigation by looking at a video by Merciful Servant called Nine Shocking Facts from the Quran. With over 1.7 million views, it is the most popular scientific miracle video I found, so it's a good place to start. First on their list is a portion of Surah 2130, which reads, We made from water every living thing. Or in another translation, We made every living thing of water. Merciful Servant explains the alleged miracle. In this verse, Water is pointed out as the origin of all life. All living things are made of cells. We now know that cells are mostly made up of water. For example, 80% of the cytoplasm, basic cell material, of a standard animal cell is described as water in biology textbooks. Is it true? Yes. The description of cytoplasm is a little clunky, but 80% water is about right. Plants come in at 80 to 90% water overall, and animals run 50 to 75% water. So the idea is generally accurate. Some scientists speculate that water is not actually essential for life, but that remains speculation. So the first criteria is met. Is this something any 7th century person could determine? Merciful Servant tries to argue now. The fact that living things consist mostly of water was discovered only after the invention of the microscope. In the deserts of Arabia, the last thing someone would have guessed is that all life came from water. Actually, a desert dweller is far more likely to appreciate the importance of water than someone who has plenty of it and takes it for granted. So this is a rather silly argument. Other Muslims may point out that many life forms, such as bacteria, hadn't been discovered yet at that time. That is true, but it's also just a technicality. Any person, desert dweller or otherwise, could easily determine that all known life, plants and animals, was dependent on water, and cutting open either reveals liquid inside. So it's a very small leap to suggesting that all life is made of water. But as we are about to see, there's an even better explanation why someone would make this guess in the 7th century. So the second criteria is mostly not met. Was this idea new to the Quran? Here the answer is a clear no. By the mid-first millennia BC, Greek philosophers were discussing all things being composed of four elements, earth, fire, water, and air or wind. Similar ideas are found in other cultures, suggesting the idea was quite ancient indeed, and likely predates even the start of philosophical writing. On water specifically, sometime around 600 BC, Thales of Miletus suggested water to be the fundamental element from which all things are made. 
About the same time, Anaximander declared, Living creatures arose from the moist element as it was evaporated from the sun. And in another place, the first living creatures were produced in the moist element. By the time of the Quran, four element theory was so widespread that it was taken as established fact. Could this be the origin of the Quran's claim that all things are made from, that is, out of, water? It's impossible to say for sure, but consider the following pair of verses. He created man from sounding clay like unto pottery, and he created jinns from fire free of smoke. In this couplet, all four elements are present. Clay is earth and water combined, while smoke is often used synonymously with air in four-element literature. Granted, the Bible uses an analogy of clay to describe humans, so it's possible the author of the Quran simply heard the analogy and mistook it as a literal origin story. Likewise, extra-biblical Jewish literature sometimes describes angels as being made up of fire. Still, the presence of the four elements in one verse is interesting, especially considering the verse is discussing what things are made of. Whether the Quran was consciously drawing upon four-element theory or not, it is clear that the idea of living things being composed of water is not original to the Quran, but instead goes back at least to the speculation of four-element theorists. Therefore, the third criteria is not met. What I quoted of Surah 2130 may seem straightforward enough saying that living creatures were made out of water. But when we turn to the classical tafsir, we see that's not actually the case. Let's first read the full verse in English to understand why. Have not those who disbelieve known that the heavens and the earth were made of one piece? Then we parted them, and we made every living thing of water. Will they not then believe? Thus, there's an implied causal relationship between the parting of heaven and earth and the creation of water. And that is exactly what the tafsir say as well. Ibn Kathir ties it all together, saying the split caused rain to fall, presumably through the newly created gap. Do they not see that the heavens and the earth were joined together, i.e. in the beginning they were all one piece, attached to one another and piled up on top of one another. Then he separated them from one another, and made the heavens seven and the earth seven, placing the air between the earth and the lowest heaven. Then he caused rain to fall from the sky and vegetation to grow from the earth. He says, And we have made from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? Meaning, they see with their own eyes how creation develops step by step. Al-Tabri lists several opinions, with most of the debate concerning the way the heavens were split. In regards to the water part, everyone seems to agree it relates to rain. Tafsir al-Jalalain, too, agrees on this point. It is meant that the heavens was parted and began to rain when it did not use to do so, and that the earth was parted and began to produce plants when it did not use to do so. In other words, water is the cause of such things having life. So, according to the classic tafsir, what the verse actually means is that Allah caused it to rain, and the rain caused life to spring forth from the earth. And I didn't find any less authoritative commentaries that said anything materially different. But if the Muslims watching have something, I'd love to hear it. Until then, the fourth criteria fails, as the verse appears to teach rainwater cause life to arise. Not that living things are composed primarily of water. The final criteria is difficult to evaluate, as it's not clear what insight we should look at. But let's stick to the claim of the so-called miracle, that all living things are composed of water. If we go by contemporary belief, 
that there were four elements from which everything is composed, then the passage's author could have only guessed water, earth, wind, or air, or some combination of those. One could easily argue that all living things are actually composed of earth in addition to water, and most also need air. So the guess is not at all impressive, since two or three out of the four options would be correct in some sense. However, a guesser wouldn't necessarily be limited to those options, but could theoretically claim every living thing is made up of stone or of wood or whatever, as silly as the idea might seem. So, on the basis of evaluating a completely random guess, we can be generous and say, maybe. In summary, we see that the scientific claim of Merciful Servant is true, and arguably could go beyond a lucky guess. However, we see that the conclusion could easily be deduced by any intelligent person of the 7th century, wasn't original to the Quran, and likely isn't even what the verse in question means to begin with. Thus, there's no miracle here, just the creativity of Muslim minds imagining a miracle where common sense is a sufficient explanation for the origin of what the Quran says. If you liked this video, let me know in the comments what other miracles you'd like me to look at. And then make sure you are subscribed to catch my analysis of more scientific miracles in the Quran. Thanks for watching.